yogis, I'm Becca and I'm here to do a class with you today um, based on safari. Okay, so all you need, you don't need any props unless you have safari costumes, in which case that would be great. So if you've got, you, know, you might be able to see here, I've got my leopard, my zebra print, sorry, leggings on. So if you've got anything that's animal print, if you've got your favourite animal cuddly toy, anything that you feel will make you feel like you're on safari, then by all means bring it round and let's get started. So all you need is a space big enough for your body. So what I would say is just take a step, big long step in a few different directions just to check that you've got space there. So I know it's quite difficult because you're all at home at the moment. So if you're in your living room and you don't have much space, that's fine. Have as much space as you can manage and we can make do with what we've got. Okay, so let's begin by sitting like a yogi. So there's a few different options if you want to sit like a yogi, just so you feel really connected and grounded in your home. You can sit with your knees bent. You can sit with your legs out in front of you, or my personal favourite, you can sit with your legs crossed. There's no right or wrong way, as long as your spine is lovely and long and tall. So we're going to start with a centering practice, and there's a few things that we're going to do to centre us. First thing we're going to do is make sure our spine is really tall and upright. You can imagine here that there's a big long golden thread running from the base of your body all the way up, coming out through the crown of your head. So it's almost like you're a Christmas tree ornament and you're just hanging from the Christmas tree, lovely and tall. And that's keeping that golden thread of the Christmas tree ornament is keeping your spine really lovely and long. And then we're going to do just a bit of a sensory exercise. So all it is, is just relying on our sense of hearing. If you feel comfortable and safe, close your eyes. And just notice the sounds that you can hear in the distance. So it's very quiet at the moment. There's not a lot of cars on the road, so you might be able to hear the birds singing. You might be able to hear maybe people outside. I just heard a bird singing. You might be able to hear your family in the rooms next to you, maybe your neighbours. All of those are good sounds to hear, just notice what you can hear. And now noticing whether there are any sounds happening around you in the room. So maybe there's a clock ticking, I know I've got a clock ticking. Or maybe your brother or sister is next to you watching and you can hear them breathing. That's also a good sound to hear. And now with your eyes closed, just notice if you can actually hear the sound of your own breath. So your breath is a really beautiful thing to listen to. It's always there. It's your friend. And it's something that you can always listen to whenever you need to, if it ever feels a bit too loud for you. Your, your hearing can always be fine-tuned enough to listen to your breath. Or even just to feel your breath. And as we listen to our breath, let's take our hands and rest them on our bellies, on our tummies. And just with our hands nice and soft, can we breathe into our hands? So just pushing our bellies into our hands. And then can we feel our bellies just drawing back in as we breathe out? So our bellies balloon outwards as we breathe in. And our bellies relax inwards as we breathe out. And with that breath, we're going to bring our hand into a yoga mudra. So our yoga mudra means our first finger and our thumb are going to connect and make a loop 
with the other three fingers, just fanned out. We're going to rest that yoga mudra on our knees. With our broad spine, we're going to now make a noise, a yoga noise. So the yoga noise we'll make is the sound ong. And we'll make that sound as we breathe out. So as we breathe in, big balloon belly. And as we breathe out, ong. your hands on your heart and notice if you can feel maybe some vibrations from that sound. So what I quite like to do when I make the sound on is maybe place my hands on my chest, maybe on my ribs, maybe even if they're clean, if you've got nice clean hands on your face and when you make that sound you can hear the sound vibrating through your face. So to warm us up, let's stand up. Okay, so first things first, this is what I like to do every morning, it's a self pat down. So all I'm gonna do is take one of my hands, with that hand, imagine you've got paint all over your hand and you're trying to paint your skin. And I'm tapping my arm, trying to paint my arm. Coloring in that arm, your favorite color paint. And then moving your hand across your chest, Tarzan noises oh, are welcome. <laughs> oh, and then going across to the other side. Again, now I'm painting this arm, my favorite color. It might even be a different color. Painting the outline of my arm with my hands. And then coming back to my chest. Oh, moving down to my tummy, patting all over my tummy, and then choosing a leg. Paint our leg with our hands. Again, this can be your favourite colour, it can be a different colour. And switch to the other leg, painting with your hands. Is this leg a different colour or the same colour? And then moving round to your back, patting yourself on the back, maybe giving yourself a pat on the shoulder, giving yourself a hug. Release your arms, give them a swing. This is where it's important to make sure you've got enough room there. Okay, and now just notice as you stand here, whether you feel that maybe your body is kind of fizzy. So there's some fizziness in your skin, you're alive. You feel like you've got an outline. With our next warm up, we're going to do a head, shoulders, knees and toes warm up. So for that, we just want to warm up those parts of our body. And then we'll go with a bit of our spine before we move into our standing yoga pose sequence. So let's start with our heads. Breathe in, turn your head one way. Breathe out, turn your head the other way. Breathe in, breathe out. So no need to go too quickly here, go nice and slowly. You might even scan and notice what you see on the journey rounds. And then let's try just tipping our ear to our shoulder. Oh, that's a good stretch, ear to shoulder. And then my favourite, there's a teaspoon on top of your head and you're stirring a cup of tea which is on the ceiling. So you just start to circle, start to stir the ceiling with your head. And then change direction. Ooh, that feels good on your neck. Okay, shoulders. As you breathe in, move those shoulders up like you're trying to swallow your neck with your shoulders and then breathe out, let them come down. Breathe in, shoulders up. Breathe out, shoulders down. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, now our shoulders are starting to move like pedals. 
pedals of a bike. So you know when you're pedaling and one leg goes first and the other and maybe you're starting to pedal backwards because you've gone the wrong way. So you're pedaling backwards with those shoulders. And how about if we move both pedals in the same direction? And then we move those pedals back. Lovely gliding shoulders here. And then get those arms swinging. That's it. You might take a little bounce of your knees. You might want to make this into a bit of a dance. That's great. We're also hitting our knees here as well. So we've got shoulders and knees. But now we're going to move down to warm just our knees. So we've done head, shoulders, knees. Take your hands to your knees. And imagine you've got pencils on your knees and you're starting to draw big circles around your feet with those pencils on your knees. Change direction. So really tracing your feet. Try and keep your feet safety, uh, super glued to the floor as you trace circles. Lovely. Nice warm knees. And now obviously we have to warm our toes. So I don't know if you can see my toes here, but I'm trying to wriggle my toes as much as I can. I'll show you with my fingers. So sometimes it helps to move your fingers and your toes together. Really try and spread your toes apart. Can you get your big toe to move away from your little toe and then bring them together? Spread those toes out. Ooh, and bring them together. One more time, spread your toes out and bring them together. Lovely. Give everything a bit of a shake. Give those legs a shake. And I think, yogis, we are ready to go on safari. Okay, so our safari is going to start like a mountain. Just at the start of the day at dusk. So this yoga sequence, when we go on safari, is going to be similar to what a lot of yogis do in the morning. They do a, a practice called a sun salutation. We're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be a bit more fun. So our sun salutation is a safari sun salutation. Just thinking about all the animals that you see on safari, and we might meet some of those on the way as we go on safari here. So starting at dusk, and we're the big mountain. The mountain at the end of the savannah. So the savanna is the plain, the ground that all the safari animals live on. So our mountain is our bottom towards our heel, heels and it's a sleeping mountain and it houses all of the animals. It houses the hyenas, the sleeping lions, the buffalo, the giraffes, the zebra. And very slowly the sun is going to start to peek its head up over the mountain, which means that we come up. And as we breathe in, our arms are going to move like the rays of the sun. They circle out and up. And as we breathe out, our arms are going to come down. So the sun is slowly making its way up, slowly rearing its head over the mountain, breathing in. Arms are lifting up. And breathing out, the rays of the sun just shine over the mountain of the mountain and the horizon. One more time, reach those arms up as you breathe in. And as you breathe out, as your arms come down, let's come up to a high kneeling position. So the sun is getting higher in the sky. It's starting to peek out and illuminate across the plain. Breathing in, reaching those arms up and breathing out, lowering our arms down. Again, we'll try that twice more, three times in total. Breathe in, arms come up and breathe out, arms come down. One more time, breathe in. Now the sun's really starting to get high in the sky. And so that means that we can start to, uh, start to join our safari. So we're standing here at the edge of the plane and we're going to take out our safari goggles or binoculars. Let's form that yoga mudra that we did to begin with. And now looking through our binoculars, taking a look round to notice what we see. 
The first animal we spot on our safari is the African crane, which is resting in the branch. So the African crane is spreading its wings out and just starting to stretch through those feathers. So you've got your knee and you're pulling it up. You're lifting your foot off the floor. And as you breathe out, lower your arms and your legs. Breathe in to lift your arms, you'll spread your wings and lift your leg. Breathe out, so we're still on the same leg here. One more time, breathe in, spread those wings out. Oh, give those feathers a stretch. And now the crane starts to take flight. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come forward and stretch our lifted leg back behind us. I'll show you that from the side. Stretch your lifted leg back behind you. There's me wobbling there. <laughs> nice, strong balance. Hopefully your balance is better than mine. As the crane flies, it's going to land. And then we come back into our lunge and we're now back to us. And we get our binoculars out and we take a look round again and notice what we can see. The next animal we see is going to be a hyena. So we look down. For our hyena pose, we're going to bring our hands to the floor and step our front leg back. So we're stretching in a hyena pose. I will show you again from the side, pressing into your hands. Maybe give your bottom a wriggle here. Maybe give your shoulders a wriggle. The next animal we're going to see is going to be an ostrich. Our ostriches are the biggest bird in the animal kingdom. They don't fly, but they do run. And they run almost as fast as a car. We're not going to run like an ostrich though. We're going to walk very gently. As we walk our hands back towards our feet, and we're going to place our hands, maybe on our lower legs, maybe on our ankles. It just depends where you reach. And from here, this is going to be our ostrich walk. So the first thing we do is step one foot forwards with our hand, with our leg, and then the other foot forwards. So this is a really fun walk to do if you like to do animal walks. I know some of you at Shefford Lower like to do animal walks with me. Walking forwards, towards, the front here and then walking back. As you walk back, take a look back through your knees so you can see where you're going. Otherwise it gets a bit, you can bump into something. Okay, and then once we're back and we've got space out in front of us, we're going to come back into our hyena pose just for a moment. And then we're slowly going to bring our knees down. And with our knees down, I'm gonna ask you to do a pose called cheetah. So you might be familiar with this pose, it's sometimes called cat, and a cheetah is just a very big cat, they're in the same family. So from here, our cheetah, with your knees on the floor, is going to take a big stretch, stretching out its spine, rounding up towards the ceiling, and then the cheetah is going to take a look around. So it's going to arch its spine away from the sky and just look left to right. And how about we do that again? So we stretch our spine up towards the ceiling, stretch the back of our body, and then take a look around as we arch, noticing what we can see. One more time, rounding up towards the sky, and then arching, looking forwards, noticing what we can see. The next animal we're going to meet on safari is going to be our meerkats. So from here, keep your knees bent and curl your toes under. Toes curl under. Bring your bottom back towards your heels and come onto your fingertips. So meerkats are sociable and curious animals and they like to hang around in gangs or mobs. Let's come up onto our fingertips and take a look round. And what you can do, if you want to play around here, is make this a little bit more challenging. So how does it feel if you lift your knees up off the floor and then walk your hands back? So this is where it gets a bit wobbly. Make sure you've got space around you. I'll show you again from the side. So knees up. Can you lift those arms up and look like a meerkat? And look around. Over the planes. 
And does your meerkat then get taller as you stand up? Oh, that's hard on the legs. And then get those binoculars out and look around again. So we're going to try our stork pose on the other leg. So from here we see our stork, our African stork, and it's on our other leg. So I don't know if you remember which leg you balanced on, you're going to balance on the opposite leg. Stretching those wings out and bringing your knee in. Lowering your arms down, your wings, lowering your leg down. Try that again. Reach your wings out, your arms, lift your knee, and then lower. And one more time, reach your arms out, spread your feathers. So your feathers can be your fingers, and lift your knee, and then take flight, coming back with your leg. Flying through the African plains and lowering your foot down to land. We bring out our binoculars again and notice what we can see as we look around. Maybe you can see your favourite animals. This is where we find the hyenas again. So we come down, hands to the floor, step our leg back and take a lovely big stretch. And then our hyena becomes an ostrich. So we walk our hands back to our feet, hands on your lower legs, taking a walk up the length of your mat. If you don't have a mat, just taking a walk up the living room and then back down, walking back, looking between your legs so you can see where you're going, otherwise you might fall over. And then moving back into your hyena, walking your hands away from your knees and lowering your knees to the floor. From our hyena, we're now our cheetah and our cheetah is going to stretch up towards the ceiling and then it's going to look ahead. So it's going to stretch up towards the ceiling and then looking ahead. One more time, stretch up towards the ceiling and look forwards. Curling your toes under, bringing your bottom back to your heels for your meerkat. Take a look around. You might try here lifting your knees off the floor so you're a more balanced meerkat. You're balancing on your back legs. Bring those arms in. How does it feel if you take a look around? A bit wobbly, it's wobbly for me. And then slowly coming up to a tall meerkat, taking your binoculars out, looking around. Now notice what you see. So we're going to come now towards the watering hole. And as we go towards the watering hole, we're going to meet our friend, the hippo. So hippo pose is going to look very similar to our cheetah pose. We're going to walk forwards, bring our hands to the floor, bring our knees down and take just a big round stretch here. Look back, really stretch your back up towards the ceiling and let go of your heavy hippo head. So give that hippo head a shake. And then what I'm going to do for the next pose is bring the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to see at the watering hole is going to be a crocodile. So crocodile pose is one of actually one of my favourite yoga poses. Sorry, you can't see me at the moment. to start though so from our hippo pose so you stayed in your hippo pose we're going to come down and rest on our bellies love and as we rest on our bellies we're going to stretch those arms bend our elbows and just rest our head in our elbows for a moment so crocodiles kind of like to sliver they sliver around on their bellies so what I'm going to do from here, so I look like a crocodile, is bring one of my knees, slide it up towards my elbow and just look at it. So that's a big stretch there across your back. And then how about we do that on the other side? So we've got our knees, they're going to come in and we bring our elbow towards our knee. Lovely crocodile there. Try that again one more time.
fantastic and then from here because we're near the water we're near the grounds let's come into a snake pose a cobra so press into your hands lift your chest Lower it down, try that again, press into your hands, lift your chest. One more time, lower down, lift your chest. And now part of our safari is come to night time. Well not till night time, but evening. And it's starting to get dusky again. And we're going to find the sleeping lions. So lions sleep for most of the day in their prides. They're big, glorious animals, the king of Africa. And lions like to sleep in lots of different positions. So can you find your favourite sleeping lion position, whether it's all curled up in a ball, just like your rock pose at the start, maybe on your side, or maybe on your back. My favourite sleeping lion position is on my back. And as I rest here in my sleeping lion position, we're not going to be here for a long time. But we're just going to notice our breath again. So lions, because they're big animals, they take long, slow breaths. So can we find our long, slow lion breath? Breathing in nice and slowly. And breathing out. And breathing in. And breathing out, you might even introduce a few lion stretches here, stretching through your legs and your tail. So you're now all relaxed and cosy. You might want to put on a warm jumper or some slippers. And you might stay in your sleeping lion pose. This is one option, or another option for you is to come up and sit like a yogi. I'm going to sit like a yogi so you can see me, but you can stay if you want to in your sleeping lion pose. So as we come here into our sleeping lion pose or our sitting like a yogi, we're going to start to blow our bubbles. So if you're lying down, you can blow your bubble in your head. If you're sitting like a yogi, you're going to take your pot of bubbles, just dip your bubble wand in there. As you breathe in through your nose, you're just filling up your body. And as you breathe out, nice and slow blowing up a bubble. We'll do that twice more, inhaling. Exhale, slow blowing up of your bubble. One more time, inhale or breathe in. And as you breathe out, blowing up your bubble. And your bubble becomes really big and it starts to just make its way around you. So you're now inside of your bubble and you can use your arms here to trace the outline of your bubble. So breathing in and out. Tracing your arms around the edge of your bubble. This bubble is a safe space. This bubble is also a really like a looking glass for you, like your big binocular, like one big binocular or a telescope for you to look out and see the safari animals that you've just met on your safari sun sanitation. So now as we breathe, our bubble just starts to float up into the sky. So it's about as high as our African stork was when it was flying through the sky. And now we're just sat here or lying here in our bubble. 
and we're looking out. And we're going to slowly just look at all of the animals that we met on our way round, on our way through our safari. And they're all just making their way gently back home, back to their safe mountain. Whilst you're here in your bubble, in your safe bubble, just looking at the animals. So the first animal we meet is the crane. And the crane is just gently tucking itself up into its safe, warm nest. So just imagining that safe, warm nest with the twigs and the feathers and the other birds keeping it warm. So the safe, warm nest is like the crane's bed. And the next animal we meet on the way is the hyena. So the hyena comes to sleep in the sleepy mountain inside the cave. And it's joined by its hyena brothers and sisters. And again, they all bunker down for the night. It's getting sleepy, resting. And the next animal we meet is the ostrich. We're just seeing how the ostrich slowly makes its way home, just meandering across the plains. And the ostrich tucks its legs in and wraps its rings around itself to keep it warm for the night time. The next animal we meet is the meerkats. The meerkats live in burrows. So the meerkat joins its brothers and its sisters and its mum and its dad goes back down into its burrow to sleep. The cheetah as well goes back to its den, curls up wrapping its tail around him to sleep. We then meet the hippo, tucking itself back into its den in the water, the crocodile, and finally, the sleeping lion. So now as our bubble floats around and the sky is starting to get dark and the sun's starting to go down, we can remember all of the animals that we met on our safari. And slowly our bubble starts to land back in our own living room. And we have those memories of the animals that we met on safari, of the movements of those animals. And we can take our binoculars and we can bring them back down to rest on our lap for our yoga hand mudra. So we repurpose those binoculars. And we can just take a gentle breath in. And a gentle breath out. And as we rest here in our living rooms, we're now going to do a song with some hand movements. So I know those of you at Shepherd Lower, this is one of your favorite yoga poses. Those of you that have not done this before, I'll be singing along with you, we'll have some music, but I will show you first what we're going to do with our hands. So this is a sequence called Satanama. So it's four sounds, and when we say those sounds, we also make movements with our fingers. So we're going to have our hands resting in our laps, but I will show you with my hands here for a moment. I'll do it with both hands and my thumb is going to be what moves. So my thumb to my first finger is sa. My thumb to my second finger is na. My thumb to my third finger is na. My thumb to my last finger is ma. So it's sa, ta, na, ma. Sa, ta, na, ma. Do that with me one more time. Sa, ta, na, ma. As the music plays, we're going to take turns singing, then whispering, and then saying it in our heads. So let's begin the music. 
Make sure that you're comfortable and that you have access to maybe something to lean against. Just going to turn my speaker on here so you can hear. Lovely, we're connected. Okay. So let's begin. Bear with me while this begins. So just making sure that you remember what the sound is like, the sa, ta, na, ma. Let's open this up and give it a play. Lovely. Okay. Just gently moving here. Let's all sing together. Are you ready? A rest. Ah, oh, you've been great, yogis. So from here, let's bring our hands together and give them a rub. So you really want lovely warm hands as you rub those hands together. And then bring your hands to your chest, so in a yogi prayer. To finish, we'll say the words. Satnam. Thank you very much, yogis. You've been an absolute pleasure to practice with. I hope to see you at some point soon.